Welcome back. It's 1234. You're listening to Inside Maine on WGAN. This is Nick Murray. It's been a pleasure hosting for you again today. Really appreciate the time. Um, and it was great to, to have some conversations with folks I might not agree with. And it's actually kind of why I like, uh, I like this show. We can bring on folks that you know, we, might not, we might not necessarily hear from um, to really get their perspective and have a, a deep discussion about certain things. I think it's, um, it's great because we're, we're used to sort of reading things in quotes in the newspaper and process through various filters and, and all of this. And so it's nice to hear directly from folks about who, who are involved in the process and what they think about what's happening and where they think it should change. Um, please go back and listen to those past segments on WGAN.com. You can find them on the podcast link. Um, so I wanted to continue on with this, this conversation about the, the federal student aid thing and, and just getting into the overall system of education. You know, where does it end um, in cost-wise and how do you really fix this problem? Because we, we agree that there's a problem, um, but when you look at this, this move, we're going to get back to the same uh, level of federal debt in five, four or five years, you know, so how do, how do we really fix this? And so I reached out uh, the other day to, uh, to Tiffany Bond, who is the unenrolled candidate, the, uh, the independent candidate running in 2nd Congressional District 2. She called in yesterday uh, and spoke with Matt about her campaign, but I wanted to get her thoughts on, uh, on Jared Golden's, you know, statement and all that, and Bruce Poliquin's statement on this, and just get her thoughts, because I think she has, some, she has a, a different perspective than you might hear. Um, so I want to welcome on uh, Tiffany Bond, candidate for Congress, uh, to Inside Maine. Tiffany, thanks for joining the, the show. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to do it. Glad to do it. Yeah, so, so you know, getting into this, this conversation, I, I really, without, without getting into specifics, you know, we don't really need to get into the specifics of the program, but I, I really want to cut to the core of, you know, what, it, what, are the, what is the value, what is the, the morality, I guess, of this? You know, Jared Golden called this out of touch, said it was out of step with working class values, you know, Bruce Poliquin sort of said a similar thing. You know, Biden chose to use working Mainers tax dollars to pay off the debts of college graduates. There's this there's this idea that this is favoring one class of people who have earned degrees and who have earning potential at the cost of folks who might not but are still going to be paying taxes for this. Where do you fall in this and, and how do you differ from your opponents in that way? Oh, my gosh. You know, I find both gentlemen to have relatively insincere opinions about this. I mean, first of all, for Bruce Poliquin, we're a net recipient state, so they're probably not using a whole on mean tax to pay our dollars to pay for this. Um, and a lot of these loans aren't necessarily being paid now. They're just sitting around people's necks. I don't think it's what I would have done with policy if I were in charge of it. So I think that, it, to me, it, it reminds me a lot of the ACA which is um, what set up our healthcare marketplaces. It helps people indeed, um, but it creates a situation where it, there's a big hole that's left. So instead of giving a flat amount, I would have preferred to have us, for example, take care of the interest. I think that we need an educated population. You know, we're not gonna have counselors or dentists or doctors or lawyers or teachers. Uh, out in rural areas, if we don't have access to education that's affordable, most families can't send somebody all the way through from our rural areas, and we need we need those skills. That's important, and I think that it's fair to have a student's contribution be time out of the workforce and tuition. I, I think that that's a fair buy-in for them. I don't think that we should be charging interest. We give banks interest-free loans. We should be giving students interest-free loans. That's a reasonable compromise subsidy that I think is appropriate. And I think that if we had, instead of just giving cash out, if we'd said, hey, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the predatory interest going forward. We're going to take it to 0%. We're going to credit for interest uh, that's been accrued, capitalized, and paid. For a lot of people, it would have the same net impact. And what it would do is it would make it a lot easier to have some of those professionals that we really need to be a part of our community in our rural areas. It's, it's very cost prohibitive now to open a dental practice or to open a, a law firm if you're in a rural area. Sure, sure. So, so if I'm getting the, you know, your interest idea here right, um, instead, of, instead of forgiving $10,000 blanket of people who hold debt now, um, and also part of this part of this plan was the the you know the president's plan was to extend a, a zero percent interest rate as well. So that's that's the current rate through the through the emergency, and that's been extended again. Um, but what you're saying is give people who have already paid interest on their loans a, a credit for that. 
Is that is that how you're you're phrasing this? Sure. Anything above? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so what's happened is our government is who set a lot of those rates and, and prices. So we've done this to ourselves, and it's it's predatory. I mean, the interest that we have, it capitalizes at awkward, inconvenient times for folks. You know, we're asking people at the years when they should be starting a family and finding housing to have these massive debts on them, and there's just no way to dig out once the interest starts compounding. If you have any sort of life event, and that life event could be something negative like a medical mishap or a car accident or it could be something positive like starting a family having a child and so i i think that we, what we should be doing is we should be taking care of the interest so there is a short extension on zero percent interest but it should always be zero percent interest so it's your position it that just always be okay so so you still you know, your position is that folks should pay what they've taken out in a loan and be calculating if they can pay it back, but the federal government shouldn't be charging interest on that loan. Sure, yeah, I apologize. You may have heard a little noise in the background. It's, no worries. It's that, uh, that's part of summer where kids are in and out of the house all the that's time. Right. So, that's right. Um, so yeah, I, I, think that's, you know, I think that's fair. I mean, when I started taking on my student loans, they were at a much lower rate. And then by the time I got all the way up to grad school, uh, you know, the, a lot of the loans were closer to eight or nine percent, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you're talking about tuition and tuition is a different problem that we need to resolve. You talked about yeah. making education affordable. There is a, a whole two hour conversation to be had there about why education isn't particularly affordable. But, you know, law school, for example, and we need we need lawyers. I get calls all the time. I work all the way from Springvale up to Millinocket. There mm. just aren't enough attorneys to handle family law cases in these rural areas. And you don't want to go and, and break your family up without professional guidance to tell you how not to get screwed and have it, how to have a sustainable future. So, um, you know, law school, it, it, it runs around $40,000 a year. You can do in-state at Maine Law for about half that, but it's expensive. Yeah, but and you get out with a law degree. You get out with a law degree and, and, and earning potential, right? But here the federal government is forgiving those loans if you make, even if you make six figures. I mean, sure, but I think you have a really skewed view of how much attorneys in Maine make. You know, when I was right out of law school, I was offered a, a, a job at a not-for-profit, and it paid $15 an hour as an attorney. So, wow. yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, for example, I'm self-employed. I don't very openly discuss exactly how much pro bono work I do, but I do a mm. lot of unpaid work to help folks who are economically disadvantaged. I, you know, I still have a mortgage to pay and I have kids to feed, so I can't just do that with my life. Um, but I'm not eligible for any, any public loan forgiveness, public service loan forgiveness, because I'm self-employed. I also used to do some work for uh, criminal defense. We don't have a, a professional criminal defenders organization or state, um, state agency. We, we hire out, we contract with private attorneys. And so I, again, not eligible for any forgiveness there. So because okay. we have so many people who are self-employed, and I hate to focus on an attorney, but it's a, it's yeah, a, it's a example I, piece. I think it's going like, to be tough to get people's, I think it's going to be tough to get people's sympathies too. <laughs> you know? well, I mean, yeah, and especially, I mean, we, you know, you're saying that, you know, you can go, I mean, and we were just talking to Garrett, you know, Garrett Martin from, from Maine Center for Economic Policy. You can go to a CTE, a career and technical education program, which is through K through 12 system here in Maine. You don't have to take the free community college. You can still come out with a professional certification and start making a, a ton there. And so I think that's where people get this idea that this loan forgiveness is is shifting a debt burden from professionals, professional degree holders and folks with high earning potential to folks who may have may have some earning potential but never did the professional degree thing. It, I think that's where people get this idea that it is shifting debt from the upper class to the working class. Do you see that? Well I, well, I think what happens is the people who have the debts who decided they wanted to do a professional type job, maybe they wanted, they always wanted to be, uh, you know, uh, an early education counselor. They, they want to work with young children as a play therapist because we definitely don't have enough of those in the state. Um, the people who have the loans came from working class, came from people who didn't have economic means otherwise they wouldn't have the loans. I mean, right. my, some I of them. spent a good chunk <laughs> of my childhood, you know, my, my father passed away when I was 10. I mean, we lived off of whatever meager earnings my mom could have. There were three of us kids. Um, you know, we, we had 
some very limited food stamps. And my mom made like $4 an hour because it was the 80s. So the, we didn't come from that sort of means. In order for me to become an attorney, which is something that I'd wanted to do for quite some time, that was my only option. Sure, sure. Yeah, so so just getting back to this idea of, of uh, you know, this is how we fix it is maybe limiting the interest and all of that. Um, yeah. It, so where does... You know where does that money go, right? I mean, you're we're in inflationary time. You gave somebody a, a loan um, for a certain amount back in you know 2008 or 2004, and uh, the money has inflated 10, 20 percent since then. You know that's still that's still money that would have that would have been made up by the interest rate in in terms of the risk and everything. I mean, this is how interest rates are developed in the in the private sector. I mean, where does that Where's that money go? I mean, someone's still on the hook for that that value in that loan, right? Yeah, you know, that's still uh, added to the federal government's balance sheet. But there isn't really risk because these loans are guaranteed by the government. We already own that debt. If How is that not risk, though? You know, yeah. we already have that, so we've, we've already absorbed that risk. So, you know, my argument is not that there shouldn't be tuition and that people shouldn't have buy-in, but mm. we need educated folks in our society. And if you don't want to have that education, I think there's a lot of paths. I, you know, if, if I could do it over again, maybe I would be a, you know, a plumber or I would work in construction. I actually really like construction. It's a hobby of mine, but, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, but we, we definitely need, I apologize. It no is a festive day here at the house. <laughs> um, uh, we, we need to have folks in our society who have and education, and if we do not go through, and um, just a second, if no we worries. do not go through, and we do not, um, if we do not go through, and we do not have those folks, then what's going to happen is we won't have dentists, and I don't think anybody wants to be, you know, YouTubing how to change their own fillings out. I mean, we're like in that place, right? Like the whole state is a healthcare shortage. Our physicians are heading towards retirement. Like we're, we're in a really bad spot in terms of workforce, not only on the trades, but also those professional degrees as well. And so, you know, this is the system that's already been, been in place. Uh, it's just, I, I don't I don't see how you know adding more more debt on the federal side is going to help this you know, and, and forgiving some of the loans for the folks here. How does that bring the workforce out of where it needs to to be? If if we need folks in the trades, um, but we also need folks in the professional degrees there. I mean, we need to attract more people to come to Maine. You know, you can forgive federal loan, uh, uh, federal college loans and student loans all all across the country. Um, and you can put some more money back into people people's pockets here in Maine. Um, but what does that do for the long-term effects? You know, we're going to be back at the same level of federal debt in four or five years of student student loan debt. Um, the federal government's debt is still going to keep ballooning. And without any changes to the environment here in Maine, how are we going to bring more people in and, and serve the workforce? Do you see that in the same way? Do we need some structural changes in how our economy works here in Maine and actually bring people in into the state? Versus, you know, cool. trying to, I, I see it as like the cart is pulling the horse. If we're going to, if we're going to, you know, pump money into the education system, but the education system's not serving the workforce, you know, something's got to give. And to me, I think the, the workforce is going to drive that. Oh, economy. I mean, it, certainly. I mean, I think that we do need to change, not just how student loans work. We need to change how education works. And I'm a huge advocate of things like community college. I actually don't have a high school diploma or a GED. I went straight to community college when I was 27 when I realized I, my, my earning potential wasn't going to be sustainable. Yeah, that's so, awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I actually think we should be putting a ton into trades. We should be putting a ton into making available community college. I love those programs, and that's part of it that needs to be fixed. But uh, the way I look at policy is I look at it as the first thing you do is stop the bleed, right? And the biggest bleed we have right now is these interest rates. So I think that we take care of that, and that's a that's a problem we could fix fairly swiftly. That's a few month problem to hammer that out. I, Fixing our overall though? education system is a multi year problem. Sure, sure. You still have that. You still have the debt, though. I mean, how does that solve the the system? Well, and I don't have the problem paying my debt. The interest rate is what I can't get out from under as, right, as, right. as a borrower. If so, you're forgiving the interest, you're still that's what I yeah. See with I mean, that's that's what I see 
So I help people when their when their sort of worlds implode because I'm a I'm a divorce and family law attorney, and what ends up happening is people come out of these relationships, and their loans have usually been in some sort of deferral or income based repayment because they've been raising children, and they're just crushing. Simply removing the interest that it has accrued would get them to the point where they could pay back their tuition that they had on loan. And that way we've already means tested it because the means testing was done when people went into school. Oh, yeah, that's 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 totally fair. That's totally fair. I think uh, that's probably a more reasonable tack than than Biden took here. I, I think you still run into this some of those moral issues and the economic issues of you know, st- still potentially feeding that moral hazard of folks saying, well, you know, I, I'm not going to fully realize the cost of my decision here. And for, for better or worse reasons, I'm not judging whatever decision was made, um, but it, it's a financial commitment that you take. And so by, by in greater incentivizing pe- more people to take that financial commitment, regardless of what the earning potential might be or regardless of what the economy looks like, that, that to me is that we're still separating the economy. We're still separating the economy from the education system. And, you know, just well, it, providing free college, uh, community college is not going to help that either, right? I mean, if we need people in the trades right now and we're giving free community college to the next three high school graduating classes, they're not going into the workforce. They're going into community college for a couple of years. We need them working we, right now. Have you seen the programs our community colleges run? The trades are at our community colleges. They've got HVAC. They've no, got sure. No, absolutely. I mean, they, they've got those programs. And I think, you know, community college is a great low dollar way to deliver. It's a lot less expensive to deliver that education and low dollar, low risk way to get engaged and find out if something is really what you want to do for most of your life before you're in so deep. You know, I, because of a lot of the unpredictability of these student loans when we were taking them on, it, it, it hasn't set people up for great situations and then we have a lot of parents that didn't even receive the education that have co-signed and they're completely on the hook for these loans as well so a lot of the folks in maine don't even have a college education they just Mm -hmm. signed up to back their kids and getting it because they wanted their kids to pursue their dream and now they're on the hook for tens of thousands of dollars so we really just we need to fix the predatory part, which was done on our watch, right? Our government let that happen. We set those interest rates. We were aware of those terms and probably right. more aware than most of the students taking them on. Right. I think we bear a little bit of moral responsibility for what we did there. And that's what happens when banks, you know, drive your policy instead of having people who are thoughtful and looking what looking for what makes the best shared purchasing decision, because really that's what Congress is doing. They're making shared purchasing decisions I mean, on our behalf, and we aren't always wise and judicious with those. Congress is making political decisions. But, and they shouldn't be. But if, they should be making shared purchasing and decisions. It, but if banks were driving the policy, as you suggest, wouldn't the interest rates be way higher? I mean, if you look at credit card debt, which is arguably, you know, you could say it's it's more risky than student loan, but you could also say it's less risky because, you know, you're not going to give somebody a, a credit card if they don't have income. Um, but we're willing to give a 17-year-old a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars student loan for four years if, with with no potential income possibilities. So if, if, as you say, banks were guiding our policy, wouldn't this interest be even higher? And isn't the predatory part of it just the fact that the federal government doesn't make the, the universities own up to this and still gives out these loans and still pre- presents it all as as a as a you know the Amer- part of the American dream is getting a four-year degree? I mean, we have to take it. We have to take you know, you have to take responsibility for that. But like, isn't the whole loan thing, the whole, the fact that the government is giving student loans to, to people who, who don't understand it, isn't that in itself predatory and not just the interest? I mean, sure, all of it's predatory, but the interest right, itself so, is a piece that we can address that makes it less predatory right away. We can address the whole that thing is, by is, getting rid of the loans. I mean, you could, and there are certainly people that lobby for that. Boy, that would make my life easier. But I don't necessarily know that fixes the overall problem. So, and that's going to have some other impacts, like you said, on people. You know, there are people that have chosen to not take this path. And I think mm-hmm. as somebody who did that for many years of my life, you know, I'm certainly willing to pay a bit in taxes to make sure I have access to things like dentists and doctors, et cetera. But I don't want to pay a whole bunch, right, if I didn't take that path. So I think it's a nice balance to get rid of the interest. We still need to go back in and fix the way our college system works. And honestly, fix the way that that students are sort of sold a song and dance as to what the income possibilities will be. 
I know That's when nice. I went into law school, I was under the impression I'd be making six figures right away. And you know what? By the time I graduated, I ended up making about $36,000 a year for the first few years. And that was definitely not enough to even touch my loans or even pay for childcare. Yeah, sure. Sure. Well, Tiffany, I appreciate you joining the show. We only have 30 seconds left on the rest of the show, but I really appreciate you calling in and offering your perspective on this. Uh, Tiffany Bond, independent candidate, candidate for the 2nd Congressional District. Thank you. Yeah, and um, I'm happy to come yeah. back anytime. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate everybody listening in. This is Nick Murray filling in for uh, on, on Inside Maine this morning. Um, glad to have you listening and hope to, uh, to catch you next week and the, in the following weeks. Stay tuned for more on WGAN.